G'day folks, welcome to this video showcasing a few more gaming maps in a broader context. Now this, uh, this stems from a geek list I did back in 2013 on Board Game Geek, where I took a couple of popular war gaming maps and placed them on other historical or contemporary maps just to get a sense of what was happening outside the map. So often when we're <laughs> playing games, we're focused specifically on these very kind of small, narrow areas, we're often focused on victory objectives, uh, victory cities, victory locations and so forth, and we miss that broader picture of what's going on outside the map and where this may fit into other events, other operations, campaigns at the time. Often, war games uh, miss that bigger picture and facilitate what I'll call very gamey situations, where they don't really reflect historical objectives or historical drives, historical events and so forth, rather they, they create um, <laughs> wargaming fictions where we are so obsessed with certain points on a map that we miss the bigger picture. So yes, we may capture that point, but along the way we've destroyed our army and when the game ends, yes, we win the game, but were this historical, in the next week or two our entire force will probably be destroyed by the enemy. So I think, to some extent, Placing these maps in context helps appreciate that um, these battles are part of something bigger. Uh, and I, I love doing this and um, aligning these wargaming maps with these bigger maps. If you have any suggestions on maps you'd like to see, let me know. Um, put up your own video and share it, or let me know and uh, I'll try and do something similar. So, the most recent one I've done is uh, was for my Race for Bastogne review, preview. Uh, this is the forthcoming title from Multiman Publishing. It's currently on pre-order, um, but looking very good. It's just a couple of dozen orders away from pre-order. And I explained this in that preview video, but again, this is the map covered in the game. And it, and it focuses on that Race for Bastogne, which is just around there. It's about 40 kilometers wide from left to right and roughly I estimate about 15 kilometers from bottom to top. It focuses on that uh, east to west drive through Bastogne on their way to the Meuse, on their way to Antwerp. Uh, they of course need to secure those Meuse crossings to drive further north. Um, and again, this is the map within that broader context of the, the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, just to show you that this was not just, th th this game isn't an entire bold game, it's just focused on that, that, that particular drive along these east-west roads. And then I place this in a, a broader context of, uh, well, on a modern day map of Europe, but showing the battle in its size relative to some of those other great titles in the Grand Tactical series. So the Devil's Cauldron up the top here, which was published in uh, 2008, uh, and you can see maps of a similar width, but this one is a fair bit longer. I think it's about 60 kilometers from top to the bottom here. Uh, and this, of course, links up with the Where Eagles Dare map, which uh, was published in 2011. And of course, they link together to form that, uh, that grand campaign covering about 100 kilometers from north to south um, during Operation Market Garden. And then, of course, down the bottom left here is The Greatest Day, uh, which is about 45, 50 kilometres from left to right. Um, and it is a, of a similar width to the forthcoming Race for Bastogne map, just a little bit wider with these extra attachments on the end. And uh, earlier I did a more focused map showing the Devil's Cauldron within the context of Operation Market Garden, just showing um, the Vile River, um, and yeah, where it all fits. Okay, so let's look at some other maps. This is one of my favourite solitaire games, D-Day at Omaha Beach by John Butterfield. Uh, it was... Um, I, I love this map. It is um, a beautifully ugly map. A lot of people hate the colours and how they all stand out. Um, but when you're playing this, it's wonderful to look over the, the the various German positions and the fire zones and to kind of think about your approach um, through the draws and, and, and so forth. Um, yes, yeah, so this is published by two, uh, Decision Games in 2009 um, and I did this map first to show the map within the context of I guess the broader beach uh, to cover sort of the immediate area and then I did another map to show where 
that map on that map fit within the broader um, invasion plans and um, the first week of the invasion and how, how that expanded. Going back to a different theatre, a different context, a different period now with uh, GMT's Sekigahara, the uh, Unification of Japan, published in 2011 uh, by GMT Games, designed by Matt Calkins, and a beautiful block game. Um, Columbia Games are very famous for their block games uh, with their square blocks. This was quite different. I don't know if there are any other games that use blocks in this same way, uh, where each block represents um, the, the different factions that you can uh, that are, are drawn to you um, during this this sort of warring period, warring states period of Japanese history, um, which ended uh, really with the Battle of Sekigahara and the unification of uh, much of of Japan. But it was interesting to get a sense of where this uh, where the main theater of operations were in this period and on this map um, it is really uh, much of the action takes place over these main roads revolving around control of the, the main locations um, and again if you haven't played this you move your blocks around secretly and you have a hand of cards to in effect um, bring these blocks to battle to enable them to attack um, so you could be moving around this big stack of blocks but not having the cards to match so you're in effect you're bluffing your opponent um, and yeah you have to balance your movement of blocks with your ability to bring, the, bring these blocks into action uh, carefully it's a beautiful map and it plays very nicely and then we move on to Wilderness War and this is a game that I was playing a lot in the late 2000s early 2010s uh, around the time when I did this map uh, focused on what Americans call the French Indian War, what much of the rest of the world sees as part of the, the broader Seven Years War in Europe, um, widely regarded as one of the first sort of global or world wars because it stretched the conflict between sort of England, France and, and so forth. Uh, other European nations sp spanned much of, much of the known world uh, or the European known world at the time. Um, and of course this <laughs> Wilderness War focuses on the conflict around the Ohio River as the French were expanding sort of south, southwest um, and claiming land for forts and the English slash American colonials were trying to basically stop them and also claim that area. And Native Americans play a key role here. Um, this gives you a sense of where that fits. Uh, I thought it was very interesting as a non-American, just again to see the scale of the conflict. It's all north of North Carolina. You can see the Ohio River here, the Great Lakes. And another game I was playing a lot of the time was Friedrich. Um, Friedrich was published in 2004. It had a bit of a sequel, Maria, which I also uh, once owned. What I loved about this game and Maria was that they were multiplayer war games, so Friedrich played well with three to four. I think Maria was more designed as a <coughs> excuse me, a two to three player game. Uh, again, you're managing your forces and a hand of cards and basically trying to manoeuvre, outmanoeuvre, um, force battle and seize um, victory objectives. Uh, whereas Maria, the map is split in two and there are two halves to the fighting. And Burma, a part of the Operational Combat series. This is uh, a big map, and again, this gives you a sense of how big the area is that it covers. Um, you're fighting here over very, very difficult terrain. So the driving theme of this game is the superior ability of the Japanese to move through this, uh, this rugged terrain. Uh, it's a brilliant introductory game for the Operational Combat series because there's a relatively low counter density, there's a great focus on supply routes, supply paths, the need to provide supply for their troops, what happens when you run out of supply. Um, so it really focuses you in on the, the core elements without being overwhelmed by these huge sacks that you can see in some of the, um, the Eastern Front OCS games. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Burma by Multiman Publishing. Here's another bold game, and this is the one that I've had so many issues with. Uh, I, it's quite a complex game, medium to heavy complexity for a block game. It's a hidden strength block game, but with a lot of additional sort of chrome 
uh, on top. I uh, used to own this, I played it a couple of times. I was immensely frustrated with the very f narrow um, victory objectives. Um, it's, it's kind of what I was talking about. This is going to have in mind when I think of um, gamey objectives, where your focus on achieving your objectives doesn't matter what else happens. So, um, you know, as long as the Germans complete their objectives, crossing the Meuse River, they win. Um, and it's so common in, in bulge games, I know. It's present here as well. Um, this is a fun game to play. Um, it is highly replayable for a block game on one map. Um, there's a lot of different sort of paths you can take and options you can do. It is very close. Um, uh, I think it's hard for the Germans to win, so you need sort of an accomplished German player. The Allies uh, could probably get a bit bored. They don't do much. They just respond to um, German attacks. Um, but again, this shows the map within... This is the bulge, of course. This is where the, the fighting was. Uh, you can see that, that, um, that red line which runs under the map. And again, on a broader map of Europe, uh, with Antwerp being, I think, uh, where is it? Just up here, I think. Okay, so that's uh, that's my first series of Wargaming Maps in Context. As I said, if you have your own videos, send me the link. If you have any examples for games you'd like to see uh, placed in context, context um, make a comment below.